Hi there, AB here. And I want to record some Skyrim. It's been a while since I've recorded, and it is that time of the year, November, where I usually like to play some Skyrim. I've taken a long break from Skyrim. I played Fallout 4 and been heavy into Starfield. And I think it's time to go back. I have lots, lots, and lots of mods, and I'll be doing a separate video on all the mods that I'm using. I'm not an expert or anything, so it's possible in this playthrough you might see some things here and there. I hope not. <laughs> I do know of one. But uh, yeah, I'll have another video where I'll go through all the mods that I'm using. But yeah, so... I recently I started playing Skyrim and then I realized I wanted to record. So then I started my playthrough again, recording it without mic, and then realized I actually do want to talk. Because it is something I want to share with you. Like that's the whole point of recording and putting on YouTube is so it's a thing I can share with you. I think sometimes there's things I like to talk about and that's part of it. So, this is going to be a playthrough um, of my main character. My character that I've been playing with, Skyrim, like basically since release. Um, I've, I make lots of characters, but there's my main character. And it's actually the character that my username is named after. A long time ago, I realized that I'm always a jack of all trades in these games. I love to do all the factions, all the side quests, everything. And so I named my character Avi Dowdy because I was real is Skyrim. I looked uh, I was interested in Old Norse at the time and I looked up and Avi is kinda it means life kind of and uh Dowdy not exactly the way I spelt it means death and so it was kinda like, oh, that kinda just fit. Um, there's a preset I use that I have, I made, uh, previously, but it's been through <laughs> a head full of modless changes, so I still have to change a few things on it, just the hair. Um, yeah, the facial hair we gotta change to a beard. None of that craziness, but something cool. actually have a pretty big beard in real life, so I like to have a character that has a kind of a long beard, even though his is much longer and fuller than mine could ever be. And then hair. I don't have any. Okay. Alright, so that's pretty much my character, the way I usually make him, or try doing all the games. Now, Skyrim, though, I do have a background for him. I actually even have some really brief little short stories I've wrote for him that I think are on my Tumblr somewhere. Um, I'll get into that. I'm, I just have a hard time multitasking, so let me save it <laughs> and um, name him. But yeah, he is supposed to look like a dark elf because his dad is an imperial and his mom is a dark elf. Okay. I just have to wait for all the things to load. And let's take a look at our guy here. Kind of hard to get a good view of him. Make a save. There it is. <laughs> I always like to... Make sure I spelt their name right, because there was one time where I got some a character up to like level 13, and I realized I typoed their name, and I had to delete them and start all over. 
because of something like that. I was on Xbox though at the time. I know on PC there's a lot. I probably could have fixed it. Okay, so um, I'm going to start setting them up. I have a specific way I want my character to be. So uh, right now I'm using uh, a mod called Alternate Perspective, and it's one of my most favorite. Um, I really was a diehard alternate start um, mod user, I guess. But this one is just too cool. Like, the problem with alternate start is Helgen is destroyed. You basically have to, if you're playing the game, you have to avoid it. Otherwise, it'll trigger that quest line, which I don't want to do. Um, I mean, I do, but this is going to be my main character, my Jack of All Trades character. So this guy will be doing the main quest, um, well, just later. And he may not end up being Jack of All Trades. It just depends. It really depends on what I want to do with him. That's usually how I play, but at this point I have lots of characters, so I might stick to the faction stuff for individual characters. Let me just set him up, though. Uh, let's see. I have a few things I need to set up, and that is first uh, customizable camera. I have a profile for that. Let's load that. There we go. That's how close I like to be. And looks good. And let's see, there's a few other things I need to make sure are correct. I have to go to Storm Lightning and make sure that that is set to realistic. And I use, um, geez, I can't remember what it's called, um, Convenient Horses. And that does conflict with Nether's follower framework. So I have to go all the way over here and make sure I turn mount support off. And uh, those are the only things I actually have to fix. Uh, there are lots of settings I do have in here, but that's all been saved. And so after I've changed all those settings, um, once that saves, I am going to save my game. And I actually need to do something right here that I, I don't do, and I really should do it more often, is load back my save because there's a few mods that don't activate until after you've loaded a save. So that allows those to work themselves out. Then I make a save here. And now it's time to start giving my character his uh, his equipment that I like to ha him to have. So my character is Avi Dowdy. His dad is an Imperial X Blades. Um, and his mom is a, rest, um, a healer. I haven't quite ever settled on whether or not his mom was part of the Blades, worked with the Blades or not. But obviously, she's his mom, so she has some association with him at some point. His mom and dad with him, uh, with Avi, were in hiding in the Gerald Mountains in a grotto. Um, and at some point, the Thalmor found them. Obviously, a tragic story. Killed both of his parents. And, but Avi escaped. And he has been living with... Um, I haven't quite figured out exactly everything, because uh, I'm still kind of writing it. But basically, he's he was on the run for a little bit, and then he hung out with Angie because Angie is a very close family friend, um, and possibly she was the one that they would go through for like supplies and stuff since they couldn't because they're blades, or his dad was. And so, anyways, like most recently, what happened is his parents were horribly murdered. Um, he escaped. Uh, hung out with Angie for like a old school, um, you know, archery training montage. And but it's too hot here in in Skyrim. Not literally. I mean, like the Thalmers, they could still be looking for Av. It's fresh um, when his parents were killed. So he um, 
Anji recommended that AV go to Bruma. So we're going we're in Helgen right now, but the idea is that um we just came here for some, some for some supplies. We're going to go back to Anji and she's going to give us some more um uh training. Um I like to imagine that this training with Anji is our uh like, you know, after we've been hanging maybe we've been with her for months and like this is like the final test type deal. And so we'll do our final training, and then we're going to go to Bruma. And that's how I like to start my character. Um, so because of that, there's a few things I like to give him. And I have this uh, Skyrim cheat engine to give myself those items. There's a, basically a setup I like to have, because I believe that you know his parents were X-Blades, or his dad was X-Blades. So they came went into the Gerald Mountains from Cyrodiil's side. So most of Avi's stuff is Cyrodiil. Like, so for armors, um, he has leather. He has a leather armor, but he has the um, this Cyrodiil one from Bruma, which is my favorite. I love it. it. Looks so cool. And we need some fur boots. I think I honestly like it. Might actually be called fur boots, but like I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> so I'm just typing in fur. It's gonna take a little longer to get there. Um, Just looking for it now. Uh, that's not them, is it? No, I'm confusing myself. It's not those. I do like those. Oh, wait, no, maybe it is those. I just can't remember, I guess. All right, so let's just find some regular ones. Maybe it was those. I don't know why. I must be tired. But for some reason, I thought those were the Skyrim ones. I just need regular ones that don't have enchantments on them. Maybe I actually need to search for boots. <laughs> Okay. Maybe at the bottom, maybe this is organized by value. No, it's it's organized by um they're just not here. It's okay. Let's try a different. Let's just search it more literally. Armors. Search armors. Fur. Boots. Inventory screen. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, Clovian for boots. I thought that's why I didn't recognize it. Okay. So we got our boots and um now I like to have iron gauntlets, but I'm not sure if that's what they're called. So I'm just gonna type in iron. I wonder if shields pop up in Probably not. I'll have to search Iron Shield, probably. But of course, I'm I want the Usuridil versions. They just look so cool. I love them. I love all their armor. Oblivion was my first uh, Elder Scrolls game, so I think I'm always going to have some nostalgia towards. That whole area. That might be why I like to start there. But with um, uh, alternate perspective, I actually ha still have the opportunity to begin the main story later on if I want vanilla through the carts and all that stuff. Here we go. I wonder, do they have shields in here? Probably not. 
But let's see. They have helmets and stuff. Oh, good, they do. Yeah, this is the shield I want to use. And that's most of everything I need. I just need um mage. I need the cyrodelic uh hood or whatever it's called. What did I type? Did I type made? Yeah, I messed up. This is why I can't multitask. Okay. Um all item search. M A G E. Whoa. Okay, let's see. Ebenezer Matehood, yeah, that's just one that looks the best with what I'm setting up. And then I need cape. I think it's this one. I get both of them because I can't ever remember. And then we do need a lantern. I can't really ever decide on which one I want. I am I do have the um wearable lanterns uh mod and then I also have the travel lantern. I can't remember which one's what's the name of which one. Um and I, I really like them both. This is the one I've used like forever, like on Xbox. And it's it really is my go to. I like the fact that I can wear it all the time and I can activate it. But it also sometimes just doesn't really look great on your outfit and the delay between activating it sometimes is annoying or inconvenient and it is nice to have the alternative one where it just um you know I just equip it and it lights and I unequip it. So I kind of like both of them for different reasons. So I, I get both and then I store one in case I change my mind later and want to go back. Alright, so let's look at what we got. Oh, one more thing. Remember the story about his dad being X Blades? Well, I always like to give him a Warren Akaviri Katana. And I like to believe that that's his dad's, but he doesn't know that it's Blades, you know. His dad never told him he was X-Blades. He just know, like, his parents were murdered, and he's went into hiding, and then Angie's been kind of training him and, you know, old-school movie montage. Um... I just want one. So he just knows it's a really cool looking katana thing and it was his dad's and he doesn't really know. Like his dad never told him about the blades and stuff. Prob maybe to protect him. I don't know. Um, let's see. So let's, let's back up a little bit so I could look at his stuff. Now for this one, I like the one that looks... Yeah, that's my favorite one. Okay. And I want these boots. Oh, we'll favorite that. And we'll favorite that. And we favorite that. We'll get to that later. We favorite that. Okay. So that's pretty much most of his stuff. I like this cape. This is such a cool looking cape. This is the, like, uh, I can't remember... I'll be going through all the mods uh, later on. I have so many, too many to, to honestly talk about right now, like 100 plus. Um, let me put away the things that I'm not using. And then in here, I'm going to grab the iron arrows. And I want the long bow. Oops, yeah, still remembering all the controls. This is definitely not B. Oh, and then over here, I need my Amulet of Akatosh. 
So um, it was. I haven't quite decided. I liked it. Well, initially the katana is his dad's, and I was go going to say that the amulet of Akatosh is his mom. So he has a piece of his mom with him all the time, and that's all, that explains why um, you know he was raised to believe in Akatosh. That's why he believes in Akatosh. Let's put that thing on. And equip those and favorite that. Alright, so now I have my favorites. I always set these up. Not that one. That one goes there. That one is up. This one's left. This one's right. This one is the other up because immersion. I like I like to take his hood off sometimes and and then, yeah, we got the lantern set up. So that's pretty much it for there. I will add healing on there once we get out of this room and everything, because I don't have that spell yet until I think I finish setting up his class. So I think that's pretty much it for his equipment. And now it's time to set up his abilities. Um, over here, there is some lag because I have some really good graphics for these things. <laughs> and the game can't quite handle it, uh, so many of them being here, but... I always choose this, this steed stone for a few reasons. The description doesn't quite match. And I think that's something in my mod list I need to correct. Um, or maybe that is accurate right there, but I always go with the steed stone. Because these are independent of my birth stone. Or my birth. My birth sign. Okay, so I did Thief Stone because if you go to my um, here's my stats, you know, uh, we have this because I'm an Imperial. Um, health, Magic, and Stamina increased by 25. You receive 10% better prices and often find extra gold in your travels. I like that. It's cool. Um, and also, so the other reason I always choose Imperial is because Oblivion was my first Elder Scrolls. So whenever I when I first played Skyrim, I made an Imperial because, for me, I am someone who knows Cyrodiil, but didn't know Skyrim. And so I am an Imperial, you know. Uh, so I always keep that. That's always like my main character is always an Imperial because of that forever. And um, there's uh, the Steed Stone. It allows me to sprint unlimited outside of combat, which for me is like, is kind of necessary. I'm so used to it in other games. It's hard to play a game where uh, you have stamina for sprinting. It's kind of annoying to me. And also carry weight is so annoying. I'm a hoarder. I like to collect every fucking thing I see. If there's a book and I don't have it, it's going in my inventory. Uh, okay, so we got that down. And now one of the other mods I have, uh, Gods and Warship. So I like to go ahead and get my um, Akatosh blessing here. So now I believe in Akatosh or whatever. Now that's added to my list. God has heard the prayer. He also fortifies my shouts. This will be... Um, this character is doing the main story. He's doing Burma because that's my... I love that place, man. It's my most favorite mod ever, probably. And um, the bonus of that, so the the main thing for me is obviously I come back to playing the Skyrim for you know after a year or whatever, and I get to immediately dig deep into that nostalgic itch by going to Bruma and reminiscing some of my um, Oblivion memories, and then I get to come to Skyrim. Uh, like level 20-ish to 30 and having a much more um, I feel like more fun encounters with uh, all the enemies and stuff than I would have playing for the 100th time at level 1 going through Riverwood and all that. And I don't know. That's just the way I usually do it. Okay. Um, now we got that set up. Now the next part is I have a mod that lets me give myself skills and stuff. 
So let's do that. I can't remember if I saved, so I'm going to save again. And let's go to my inventory. Let's go over to select class. And I always like to make a custom class. And for here, I do usually choose Magicka because if you're playing a Jack of All Trades character, um, in my opinion, the most important two uh, attributes is Magicka. Number one, because there will be magic abilities you just you really just can't do if you don't have enough Magicka. And then Stamina is second important because of um, all of the uh, power attacks and stuff like that. And then health, I honestly feel like is not that important because if you you can balance that out with like smithing up better armor, weapons, or whatever. So I always go with Magicka. And I also, specifically for this character, I believe that, that it makes like lore sense because his mom is a Dunmer. And I, if I remember right, um, the elven races do um, have a Magicka bonus. So I do want to be Magicka. And now I get to choose six skills. Now, I like to believe that his dad taught him how to block. How to use a sword and how to do like basic smithing stuff to maintain his sword and his uh, armor. His mom taught him restoration and his mom taught him alchemy. And maybe both parents taught him how to speak, uh, you know, literally, but. I also like to believe that being that he will become the Dragonborn, he has like a natural ability for it that maybe he doesn't know yet, but he's just always had kind of a silver tongue, but it ends up being like more literal than he thought. Those are my skills. And then now this is where you could choose an ability, but I always go with he's a Dragonborn, so I like to choose this one here, Damage Against Dragons. He's, it does feel a little OP, especially with some of the other things, but honestly, um, things like that, I can always bump up the difficulty if it really is getting too easy. And that aside, it's like, as a Dragonborn, you are going to be fighting dragons a lot. So it's really, if anything, it's the quality of life. So I choose that one. And I get those abilities added, and that's where I got my healing. And now for birth signs. I always choose the thief. Because the thief is the... Um, I think it's the star sign for the for December. And I'm a December baby, so I always like to choose the one that is most like me. I always go with Thief. And I think it fits for him too. Um, just kind of, uh, the Thief is the last Guardian Constellation. Her season is the darkest month, Evening Star. Those born under the sign of the Thief aren't necessarily thieves, but they are often cunning, quick witted, and have a proclivity for taking risks. Those under the Thief have the Thief's cunning and find picking pockets and locks 10% easier. Normally, in the other Elder Scrolls and Oblivion, I choose the Thief, um, in Morrowind, the Thief, and uh, usually in Skyrim, I only stick with the Thief um, stone, but since I can do this skill thing with this mod, I get to have both. So I get to have the stone I want, which is the Steed Stone, and the birth sign that I want, which is the Thief. And that's pretty much everything. My character has been set up. And now it's time to go into the world. I should be keeping track of how long I'm recording. Okay. So let's see how far I can get in about 30 minutes. <laughs> um, I've already saved. Um, oh yeah, I would like to grab some lock picks, and I want, I want some money. I don't want that much money. I think that's fine.
enough that I could buy some inns and or you know beds and stuff here and there. Which reminds me, I do like to have oh, item search. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, camping supplies. Well, I have one. So, do, do we have a wood axe in here? We don't? Well, that's fine. We'll find those things. Um, as I play, it's no big deal. I don't need those. Alright. Let's do one final save and delete some unnecessary saves. Okay, so we got some saves in, and now it's time to... There's uh, so many alternate starts we could use, but I'm not going to choose any of them because I'm just going to leave Helgen. Remember, my story is um, my parents murdered by Thalmor. I'm kind of on the run from Thalmor. They chased me. I wrote a story where I had a... I, it's on Tumblr. I'll update it at some point. I'm rewriting it right now. I actually had plans I was going to make a mod and do all this stuff, uh, but I never got around to it because I'm still writing stuff for it. But one day, if I ever finish that, I do want to add in something, make a mod for some things. So it'll be there one day. <laughs> Anyways, for now, uh, he's on the run, and he just came to Helgen from Angie's where he's been hiding out to grab some supplies. And he's going to go back. Um, today, she's going to train him on archery. Um, which they've been training for a while, but today is like the final test. We're, we are going to head cannon away. The other stuff she says that is like they haven't met. Because we head cannon, they've already met. And um, then we're going to go to Bruma. Speak and fulfill your destiny. None. We don't have any destiny. We do, but just not yet. Yes? Okay. So we are here. I'm going to make a save right before I leave. Because I'm really picky, and if I don't like the weather, I'm coming back in here. <laughs> So, so much. What do you want, Imperial? I'm trying to talk. Jesus Christ, bro. Say this is perfect. I'm gonna grab a piece of wood axe right here. This place looks so amazing. I love it, man. I'll, I'll go, I will, I want to, I guess I could just talk about Alternate Perspective. It's just such an amazing mod, like, I am, I also have Helgen Reborn at the same time. So, this is going to be so amazing for this specific character. All the other characters will just have Helgen like this forever, because they will never do the main story, but this character does the main story. AV will be going through the main story. So this town will get wrecked by the dragon, and then through Helgen Reborn we'll rebuild it. It's pretty awesome. But listen, we got our supplies from for Anji, and we gotta head back. And I do believe I'm going the wrong way <laughs> already. I mean, I usually go up for the mountains because I think it's actually easier. So we can... There's quite a few different ways that you can get to Aji. But she's all the way up there. And I'm really stubborn. 
There's areas down here. So for a very long time, I only ever spawned with an alternate start mod at Anji's. So I don't want to go into any of this area unless I'm coming from Anji's. So that'll be something I do after Burma when we get back, stop by Anji, and then we'll get into Skyrim. Um, yeah, so let's head over there. Gonna be a bit of a walk. But that's how it is. Go. Make it quick. I just have to buy some supplies for Anji real quick. Questions. Take a look. Wow. Let's see what does Aji need? Um we don't have a lot of money. So let's see if she just needs some. Oh, I forgot to give myself healing potions. Those are expensive. She wants some meat with juniper berry, obviously. And he needs leather strips, maybe. Some charcoal, she, wants to do, she has some notes she has to take, and leather strips. Repair some stuff. And steel ingot. I don't know what she's up to. Maybe push up cure disease. I can't get that though. Alright, well, thanks. Alright then. Oh, yeah, let me uh, give myself something really quick. I usually give myself 20, um, no, 15 minor healing potions to start off with. Uh, heal. Push a minor healing, there we go. This 15. I feel like that's fair. I favorite it, but I don't actually put it in my um, quick or a hot keys or whatever. Okay, so now we've got some supplies. Now we're gonna head back. And. Maybe I don't go the Valkyrie's way because it's um, a lot more open. And this is a little bit harder to track me through the snow. So we'll head over to Anji with our supplies. I can go this way. Yeah, that way is going to wind around up. It does get a little hard to tell exactly. Oh, but it'll go this way. Yeah, this is good. We go through the mountains. I remember that. Around that fort. And then she's up that far away. Turning off my keyboard, I don't need it for a while. Yeah, so initially when I started 
recording or wanting to record. I started playing the other day, and then I realized um, that I wanted to record what I was doing. I'm always starting and stopping playing Skyrim. Honestly, like never really finishing it <laughs> ever since probably the first few times. So I thought maybe if I recorded that it would do two things. I get to share it with you and then I also motivate myself to continue it. Although I'm, of course just like all things that I play I will get burned out at some point and I'll probably take a, a break from Skyrim. Just like I'm currently taking a break from Kingdoms of Amalur and The Sims 4. Although I'm super hyped to go back because Life and Death just released. But I would like to just have these ongoing playthroughs on the background that every once in a while I'll jump in and do, you know, an hour of Skyrim or whatever. And I like to get to the point where I'm doing multiple ones simultaneously. But usually I get really stuck into one thing. Right now that's amazing beauty of Skyrim. I love it so much. It's just nice to come back to Skyrim and do a little tour. But yeah, so... First I started playing, and I wasn't recording it, and I decided I wanted to record, so I started all over again. After only playing for like an hour. And then I decided I wanted to record. So I record, but I decided I didn't want to record with Mike. So I started recording without a mic. Did that for an hour. And then I decided I don't want to do that, I want to record with Mike. So this is my third time playing this past week, trying to start the game. I don't know if I'll always be recording with my so There might be some days where I just want to relax and play Skyrim, but I don't want you to miss out on any progress, so I might still record. But I won't be recording my little microphone, my little voice. That's okay. I hope you don't mind as I sort of figure out what it is I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Over here we're uh, approaching the Hold of Fall Creek that's on our right. That looks amazing. And I think that might be... Um, what's that dungeon? That first dungeon that we go to? Big Paul Sparrow. I think that's in the distance. Or that could be the other... There's another... Um, dungeon closer to Falk But yeah, so because of Avi's little backstory that I've created, um, it does mean that whenever we first see Thalmor and they're not hostile, I have to do the dialogue with them about the religion thing to make them hostile towards me. So going forward, all Thalmor are hostile towards me because that's what fits my backstory. Where are you, Angie? Oh, there you are. How did I miss you? Anji, and if you try anything, yeah, I know. So, like oh. I said, name's Anji. I moved. At the time, I couldn't stand to be. Don't be like them. Don't feel sorry for me. Two imperial drunks who thought they were above the law. Already did. Part of the reason I'm living out here now. Thanks for offering, though. I set up those targets a long time ago. 
I shoot at them from time to time. Don't want to get rusty with my bow. That I am. You know how to use one? Well, let me know if you ever want to practice. If you need a bow, there's one on the rack to the left of the door. Excellent. Follow me to the targets and we'll begin. My father was rarely home, so it was my mother who actually taught me how to use a bow. always said composure was the key to a successful archer. If you can remain calm, even in the midst of chaos, your arrow will most likely find its target. Okay, let's see what you can do. Remember to stay within the boundaries and only use the practice arrow. Only use the practice arrows. Got I it. have some if you don't have any. Aim for the middle target. on target. Now hit the target to the left. Great shot. Now hit the target to the right. Nice shot. Right on target. Let me know if you want to practice some more. I what do. do you want, Imperial? Excellent. Follow me to the targets and we'll begin. My older brother took me out hunting a lot when I was little. At the time, it was difficult to keep food on the table, let alone have enough left over to sell at the market. So whenever we came across more than one deer in a single location, it was imperative we kill as many as we could. If you can learn to keep your composure and trust that each shot is true, then you should be able to quickly handle multiple targets. When I tell you to, try and hit each of the three closest targets in eight seconds. I'll count to three and then say go. You have eight seconds to hit each of the three targets. Draw a string and get ready. One, two, three, Watch it! You did it! All three targets in eight seconds. Nice job. Let me know if you want to practice some more. Next time we'll make it a little more challenging. Great job hitting those targets. You, you definitely surprised me with your speed and composure. Excellent. Follow me to the targets and we'll begin. We've talked about speed and composure. Now we'll go over precision. Oftentimes you won't be able to get as close to your prey as you'd like, and you'll have to settle with a long shot. However, with such a long shot, it's more than likely that's the only shot you'll be able to take before your prey runs off. If you find yourself in such a situation, then you need to make your shot count. Don't rush your shot. Crouch down, get comfortable, and take aim. Okay, your turn. Try and hit the target way in the back, far behind the other three. Remember to take your time and make your shot count. Be careful. That's not good enough yet. Okay. This one's always kinda hard. Nice shot, right on target. Let me know if you want to practice some Yes? Excellent. Follow me to the targets and we'll begin. This is the hardest one. We've talked about composure, speed and precision. Now it's time to use all three at once. 
warning you now. This challenge will be quite difficult. Just remember everything I've taught you, and you should be able to complete it. It may take you a couple of tries, but that's what practice is all about. When I tell you to, try and hit all four targets in ten seconds. Here, take these. Nice. Looks like you're running Thank you. low. I was. Alright. I'll count to three and then say go. You have ten Check seconds right. to hit each of the four targets. There. Draw string and get ready. One, two, three. Go! That one is just so hey, hard. I have it? no idea if I hit it. Oh shit, it took too long. Fuck. You did it! Yes! All four targets in ten seconds. Nice job. Need something? I think I've taught you everything I know. You might even be as good as me now. Kind of scary if I think about it. It was my pleasure. It's not often I get visitors out here, let alone friendly ones. Thanks for sticking around and keeping me company. It was nice to finally meet someone out here who doesn't want to rob you or take off your head. I know it isn't much, but here, take this bow. It was given to me by my family. It's special to me, but brings back too many painful memories. Thank you. Remember, composure and speed. You don't need to see your arrow hit before moving on to your next target. Trust your shot is true. Trust your shot is true. Make a save. That was awesome. I love Angie. She's amazing. So cool. And she's the one who trained me how to do archery in my backstory. Oh yeah, grab a foot about. Do a um I do something like that. I don't think that's a good picture though. I like that. Okay, I always forget about what I'm up. So cool. Alright. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah. Let's equip Anji's bow. It's better than my longbow. And make sure those are equipped and I'm not shooting practice arrows because I will forget. Oh yeah. And we need to add in our healing. Where's that? There. No. Here. That. There we go. Now we're set up. We can also delete some of these older ones. Now it's time to go to Bruma. We, just, we talked with Anji and I'm not sure if I want to have her connection to it. But originally I ended up working for the Bruma guard when I was over there. So I like to believe that that's kind of what will happen. But for right now, we're just getting the hell out of Skyrim because it's, it's not safe for me right now. And just me even being here is putting Anji at risk, which she might already be at risk, so we gotta get out of here. Oh yeah. There's one thing I did forget now. I gotta give Anji her supplies that she had me go get. Yes? And I like to think that um, she wanted me to have this book so I can read a little bit more about um, archery and stuff. So she gives me that book. There's also a treasure map in here. Or in the future, maybe I'll want that someday. But I am going to give her those supplies. 
that we got. Anji isn't just sending us to Bruma, she actually... She has a, um... Either she has a property there, or she... Knows someone that has a property there. I like to think she knows someone that has a property there. That's going to let me stay there. And they hid a key for me. And so I just have to, when I first get to Bruma... I need to go to my house over there that I have. A little small home that I'll be staying. Oh, man, a little lost. Here we go. Out of my way to Hill Pass. The game is handling really well. I decided instead of streaming through Twitch and then uploading from Twitch to YouTube, I'm just recording it myself on OBS. And I was worried it would have made the performance not as good. I think the performance is better this way. It seems like it's handling really well. Looks so beautiful, the music right now, the lighting, everything is just perfect right now. This is the best game ever. I don't care what anyone says. I don't have an ENB, but I do have um, another mod that does some similar stuff. As well, of course, but really close. I'm playing off of a laptop, so the fact that it can do what it's doing is asking a lot and already impressive in itself. So I'm very content with where we're at. It took a long time to get here. Let's look at our character for a little bit. Anji told us about the cave. She says that if we take this cave and we're careful and avoid, it's a it's a smugly uh, smugly it's a smugly cave. No, it's it's a it's a cave that smugglers use to go through to get to and from Skyrim. And Anji knows about it because she's used to work the blades as a messenger. And so, Anji told me that this is how I can get there. So, no one's watching us, we're gonna sneak in here. I just have to be very careful because there could be smugglers in here. I 
just take the iron helmet. I love it so much. Right now I have a mix and match of um, heavy and light armor because that is my preference for my main character. My main character does a little bit of both. My other characters I do like to have uh, more set list. I do like to collect the skooma and moon sugar. My character doesn't use it, he just likes to have it. Okay. Why those look so must be um because I'm using a 1k. What was oh. that? specific helmet in here. I might have already picked it up. Yeah. Oh, roll of paper. See, I do think that one's a little bit easier to work with. Um, I'm just not big on how it looks, and it's probably because I have a small character. Like, I, I play very thin character because <laughs> I'm pretty skinny in real life. I think it's okay, just I'm not a big fan of how it sticks out. But I think it's fine. It looks really good, and that one just came out. I mean, the original was out for years, but I think, but this one is a remastered version that just came out like this past week. So I'm very happy to be using it or to have it for my playthrough coming back. Oh, these guys are tougher than 
Should help me, but I still want. I still want to take everything like this. This is goblin, but goblin blade. Like, come on, I want that. <laughs> I always try to remind myself, like you can come back here later, okay, if you really want. But I, I want it. I want it now. It, but we only have nine tries. Oh man. This is why I saved though. Jesus, my lockpicking sucks right now. Oh, it's somewhere over here. It. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it at level 10. Alright, let's, let's try again. Oh, maybe it's there. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Let's slow back. There's just some things you can't do. That I have to earn. Looks really cool. It did a good job of designing that loot chest room. Maybe one day I'll revisit it. A 
wish I could take that totem with me. That'd be cool. I love that. That's like a whole secret area. Like, you could have walked right past that. It was picking up the goblin sword right here. That was like a tip. each of those for whatever reason. And here's where I do get a little lost. So I think I have to go down this one. So I need to make it this way. use that yet. My head can let's see, we do need to go here. It's this way, I think. Am I lost? Oh, there it is, I found it. I think, yeah. Hachi said up the steps by the cave. Yeah. 
to there being a lot of He warned me. There's a lot of wolves up there, so be careful. I already hear one. Is that it? gave me a key that won't even unlock the supply chest he gave us. Must have made a mix-up with a bloody milk drinker. My weapon is dull, my armor is nearly all worn away, and my wounds are festering. And even worse, I hear the wolves, their howls growing louder and louder by the night. Yeah, looks like he did get attacked by the wolves. I'm being hunted. That lot of good my comrades have proved from far as off what scouting out some old lake and old trig creeping around an old tower. Exactly the kind of tactical genius. Alright, so we need to look for somebody by a lake and by a tower. No wonder they cast him out of the real Stormcloak army. Yeah, these guys are a splinter faction if I remember right. A madman and a milk. Well, the wolves are on the move, and so am I. I'm not about to become their next meal. Uh, you did, though. I already say. I think the lake that they're talking about is... That's weird, because it's not trying to do reflections, but I think the lake is... Not down there. Somewhere nearby, but I guess I can't see it from up here. I think I have tried to go inside that cave, and it's like extremely tough at my level. There's like a couple of trolls in there that I had just. I need to wait. I'm a stronger. Boy. Music and the atmosphere of Beyond Sky and Bruma is absolutely amazing, and it's they totally nailed it. And to me, it 100% it feels like an official DLC like Dawn Guard, or um, actually, I mean, Dragonborn DLC. Like, it's my favorite. I love doing a playthrough in Bruma, and I love doing a playthrough in uh, Soul Slime. It's just music, though, it just is. Um, What's his name? Daniel Rand or something like that? Uh, just totally killed this. The vibe, everything, 100%. Oh, that was way too high. Ooh, that was a good hit. I have to use, uh... Oh, he's got me sometimes. He actually almost got me.
will need that lockpick, that's for sure. And you know what? It's nighttime. Let's go ahead and look at our stats. Get that stamina, and I'll put another one in stamina. And I think it's really, really important. Our first point goes into our offense. And our second point goes into making quests a little bit easier. Not sneak. Um, speech. Not sure if that helps, but... There is uh, at least one particular quest here that you do need to have a good speech skill in order to do well on it. Now right over here is the little house that Angie told me about. She has a friend that watches over this place and has agreed to let me stay here for a while. And they they moved, went to um, Sir, um, Imperial City and so they're letting me Stay here for a little while. Oh, while I'm here, we need to get rid of some of those hides that I've been collecting. And here's our nice little Bruma home. It's a little laggy in some sp specific spots because of some other texture mods I'm using. So if I look at the food, I get some frames dropping. And if I look over here at these soul gems, I get some frames dropping. But other than that, it's, it's perfect. I love it. I use this all the time when I come here and play in Bruma. Oops. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and store all my stuff that I'm not using right now. I'm going to break those down. I'm going to sell those. Put those weapons that I found. I don't use steel arrows. I, I really just use iron arrows for like the majority of the game until things really get tough because uh, at least in traditional Skyrim, like un, like vanilla Skyrim, your archery skill is just so OP combined with sneaking and everything else. But in here, maybe different because I am using, um, I'm using a different uh, perk mod. So maybe that'll fix things, I don't know. I only keep, um, I forgot what they're called, flawless, the flawless ones, because those can be used for crafting. The regular ones like this, I can't use for crafting, so I sell those. And then I do keep all my books. Um, but we'll be keeping this one, because there's a quest relating to it. it this one we don't have to keep, I just, my memory sucks, so. I want to remember. And I'm just going to stash all my food here. Food and ingredients. Only ones I want to keep, which we haven't collected any yet. I should have got some when we were in the cave, but I forgot. Uh, I guess I could put... No, I really do just sell all my potions. I really don't care to keep them. So let me do a save, because that's a lot. We did a lot, it sucked to lose all that progress. And I do think this is where I will be wrapping up for this initial video. Um, so when we come back, we are going to first AV, 
he's heard a lot of stories that his dad told him about a, a place called Cloud Ruler Temple, but of course dad never mentioned anything about the blades or whatever, but maybe he wants to go and check it out. He's finally in Bruma. He wants to go to Cloud Ruler Temple. He talked to Anji about it and she revealed that that was like the blades headquarters. She said it totally got ransacked, destroyed by the Thalmor, but maybe he's here and he just can't resist. He wants to go check it out. So that's the first thing he's going to do in the morning. And then he'll head to Bruma and see if he can't get some work. Um, just be here for a while. Maybe be here for a few months or something until it, things calm down a little bit in Skyrim, maybe. At least that's his plan. And let's just clean up some of these. Alright. Well, thank you so much for listening to me and for watching me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little beginning of my Skyrim playthrough. I do, guess what, have plans for Starfield and Fallout 4. Starfield and Fallout 4 are going to be tough because I, I don't want to start them all. I've made a lot of progress. But I can, I might. We'll see, I probably won't. Those ones, we might just be jumping in, and I apologize for that, but I've made so much progress, and I am stubborn as hell. <laughs> so we'll see. But anyways, this is fun. Um, I appreciate you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, this video will be going up on November 11th because I love Skyrim. It's my most favorite game of all time. And um, that's what I do. When it gets to be the fall winter months here, like, I want to play Skyrim. I didn't last year because I was so sucked into Starfield. But here we are. We're going to try and get through this. <laughs> you know, I, to be up front, I might take some breaks here and there. Like I am curr currently doing with Kingdoms of Amalur, though I've been getting an itch to go back to Kingdoms. I'm just waiting a little bit longer uh, because I did play that like nonstop for a few months. Um, yeah, well, that's it for now. I'll be uploading another video. Um, my Skyrim playthrough, that's the game I'm currently playing, so you can expect Skyrim videos to be up at least once every week or so. Um, there will be a video, I'll probably be doing that one this weekend, so for you that might be coming up, being uploaded, I don't know, Tuesday or something, maybe Sunday, of my mod list. Maybe that one will go up, who knows. Um, but that'll, I'm gonna try and dig through. I'm gonna drink some coffee and have a full fucking bug of coffee. <laughs> and then I'll go through all of my mods. Because there's so many. But I'd like you to know what's in here and what to expect. And that's it. Alright, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a good day. Good everything. I'll see you soon. Bye now.